Hey, what's up? From Alias Studios, this is Human Nature. I'm Marcos Trinidad. Every week, I'll invite you to get out into the nature of your neighborhood with the help of people who see the world a little differently. People like Luann Brickhouse, founder of an Instagram account called The Daily James, where she documents the surprisingly rich natural world of her own backyard. The feed is full of interesting characters. Ground squirrels chomping on plants, turkey vultures hanging out on railings, lizards searching for snacks, and ravens keeping watch over it all. I had to see it for myself. So I went with my two producers, Carla and Caroline, to the Daily James HQ, Luann's home in the Hollywood Hills of Los Angeles. Hi, good morning. It's Marcos. Hi. Okay, well, come on in and feel free to look wherever you would like to. Luann's house is on a quiet street, and behind is a big hill covered in ivy. When she first moved there, there was a lawn. But over the years, she's transitioned to California natives and drought-tolerant plants, like California black sage and milkweed. As we walked around, I noticed acorn woodpeckers, California towhee, Allen's hummingbirds, and little house finches. So I counted about eight species so far, and we're just like to the side of you're, the house. You're very good. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a oak tip mouse um, <laughs> making that kind of scrub noise. The um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Are these little cameras? Yes, there's like oh, cool. almost 50 cameras around the habitat that I'm using to learn about wildlife. Luann's cameras pick up everything from coyotes stopping by to drink at the fountain at night to recently hatched baby owls. But some of the Daily James regulars are easier to spot. I'm putting out romaine lettuce right now, and it's very crunchy. I'm tearing it up right now. Like a gray California ground squirrel and her grandchildren. And if I'm stressed out, I come and give her some romaine lettuce, and, and she helps me. It's, I was it's better than any kind of therapy. I was expecting like a leaf of lettuce, but that's a full on. Oh, well, I don't always <laughs> give her a whole head of romaine oh. lettuce, but but it's a special occasion. Special you're occasion. Here, so, you know, everybody's celebrating your visit to the habitat. Right. Even though her house is in an urban area, right in the middle of Los Angeles County, Luann has learned to see her backyard as a window into the natural world. I mean, I was one of those people like, well, I have to go to Yosemite to experience nature. <laughs> or, you know, I'm going to have to go to a forest to experience nature. And that's not true. After the break, how an unexpected wildlife visit changed Luann's outlook on nature and set off a journey of discovery. After giving us a tour around, Luann brought us inside to learn about her Instagram account, The Daily James, and how she went from an urban nature skeptic to a true believer. Luann told me that the story starts with a career change. For most of my career, I've worked in Hollywood as a storyteller, a film executive. But in late December a few years ago, she changed things up and started writing, which meant spending a lot of time at home. And I bought a bird feeder one Christmas and hung it up. And we noticed how popular it was. Birds started crowding around. So we went and got another bird feeder. And then we built a bird bath. And that's when it happened. We filled the bird bath with water. And within hours, these two giant blackbirds showed up. And they were ravens, which I didn't know what they were. I had to look it up just to make sure. And I was utterly enchanted. The two birds that landed on Luann's birdbath were common ravens. They were huge with beautiful black shiny feathers. So we named them James and Margaret after James Baldwin and Margaret Mead because they once had a conversation about understanding each other. And when I read that conversation, I was so transported and moved by it. And I felt like that was what was happening to me. I was being introduced to a truly magical world. Because in Hollywood, you know, you're manufacturing the magic. 
you're making it up. But here, an individual came to me and he was magical and he was real. One of those ravens, James, very quickly became a regular. And the Daily James started because, you know, I would fawn all over him, like, you're so handsome. <laughs> and like, I started talking to him because I, I just of couldn't believe he's gonna it. Of course going to come back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and he would start knocking on the window. Wow. He would arrive and he would come up to the window and he would knock. And this blew my mind. Like, where are my compliments? <laughs> How does he know to knock on the window? How does he know that will summon a human? And then if we weren't in the room, he would knock harder. And that, like, that level of intelligence, like, when you start to think about it, it just, I could not believe the reasoning he was capable of. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, a raven knocking on your window in your living room, I had to take a picture of that because I would describe it to people and I could tell they were like, well, she's probably making a little bit of that up. She's in that industry. You know, she's, she's just embellishing she it for a good herself. story. Yeah. Like that's what she does. So I started taking photos and I, you know, didn't know the first thing about taking photos. And then I started the daily James on Instagram and I, over time, developed this incredibly close relationship with James and watched him in his relationship with Margaret, his lady love. And he is always so deferential to her, never cranky. And so now I was learning not only about like how charming this a bird could be, like I'm in love with this bird, but then how loyal and caring and patient and like always romancing his partner mm -hmm. and i was learning about love and like wow it just it made me stop and think like maybe i shouldn't be so impatient you know <laughs> you know um it just it taught me so much and then with james watching him and being out that's what drew me outside more i started to really watch more of the wildlife and see what was going on. What was your connection to nature before you met James? I liked nature, but I couldn't have defined it for you. And I liked dogs, but that's as much as the next person. I couldn't tell you really any species of anything. I could not explain, you know, why water is so important. Like so many things I know now, like how we are connected or what's the importance of allowing insects to live. Like I, I used to have cans of Raid everywhere, mm. you know, oh, an insect's in the house or a spider. Let me go get the can of Raid. And I, yeah, I remember growing up and, and Raid was just a household item. Yes. It's almost every home had Raid, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least in, in my neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and folks used it without question yes because i i just didn't know i didn't know any better it sounds like there has been a lot of changes and and it almost seems like a lot of those changes started happening with meeting james can you tell me how you have gone from that person that loved dogs and and some nature to that who you are now it's been a long journey and a lot of self-education, but it did all start with James because the more I watched wildlife around me and saw their relationships and their care towards each other, it struck me, I didn't think of wildlife as having any sort of feeling, mm -hmm. but they react. I, it, you know, when people say you're anthropomorphizing wildlife, I am so ready to have that conversation because let's, let's look at, you know, the family of elephants or the family of squirrels or ravens. They do love and they do mourn and they do care for each other and they do protect each other. And maybe it's not your exact definition of love or mourning or caring 
but it is. And you start to learn, like, maybe we as humans are limited by our definitions of what that is. There are so many things that we just don't know that you realize, I don't know anything sometimes. <laughs> and maybe watching them, I can learn something. So you call all the animals and, and creatures that are around your home residents. Can you explain that relationship? I call them residents because we share this place and we're residents here. So are they. So I often say we share their yard. Mm -hmm. And I've really learned how important it is to share your yard. I was on next door, you know, the app, because I check that sometimes. And someone had seen a bobcat in their yard and was saying, who can we call to remove the bobcat? Mm. And maybe that would have been me many years ago. But now I know, like, where do you want them to take it? Like, have you seen L.A. from Mulholland? It's all city. There's nowhere for it to go. And that bobcat is not going to bother you. And, you know, keep your pets indoors or be with them when they're outside. But I've really come to know how important it is that we find a way to just share our space and and not only share our space because it's the right thing to do but because it's way more fun it's way more fun to go outside and see all these little faces happy to see you it's better than any movie luann tells me that the longest term resident before the two raven friends is the same california ground squirrel we were looking for earlier there's also mildred the magnificent and mumford the turkey vultures they started coming in, I think, 2015 also. Mildred the Magnificent has a favorite spot on the top of the telephone pole where she likes to spread her wings. And when I go outside to say hello to her and I tell her that she's beautiful, she'll spread her wings. Wow. And some people will say, well, she's just doing that to warm herself, <laughs> which she is. But now something has happened that when I go out to genuinely give her compliments that she spreads her wings. And so Mildred the Magnificent one year later brought Scout, the turkey vulture, who Scout lands on our porch and Scout grew up with James and Margaret's babies in our front yard. James and Margaret would drop off their babies the raven babies in whatever tree Mildred the Magnificent was hanging out in. Mm -hmm. And they would stay there all day long. Like she was the babysitter, babysitter. <laughs> like daycare. And I know this sounds so far fetched, but I have it all on, you know, I documented it all. That's mm -hmm. one of the reasons like what, you know, raven baby daycare with a turkey vulture. I don't believe it. Thank goodness I recorded it. As Luann became more and more enamored by the fellow residents of her yard, so did other people across the world. Today, The Daily James has over 200,000 Instagram followers. The Daily James community, first and foremost, is kind and they're funny and they teach me and they're this family that I don't know, you know, in person, but I feel like they're all a community. In the way that the habitat here surprises me, it also surprises me that in this internet age of trolls and negativity and people <laughs> fighting online, that there is kindness. And, you know, there's always the occasional person who has to just bring things down in the comments but for the most part it's this beautiful relationship among all of these people that don't know each other it's so heartening to see in so much negativity today that people can come together and and be kind to each other
When we come back, Luann's tips for becoming part of the community that is already thriving all on its own in your neighborhood. What would be some tips or recommendations that you would have for for folks that are living their lives that may not be tapped into nature in a similar way? What would you think could be that first step of, of getting to a point where not necessarily like, hey, this is how you go make a friend, a nature friend, yeah. but these are the things that can start one on a path to a observation. Well, you you brought up two interesting things. One is that nature, you know, it's not always love. There, There's the circle of life <laughs> where a hawk may take out a songbird. And that's hard to see. That was really hard for me to see. But I accept it because I respect how how nature is and, and there's no waste. The hawk has to eat too. <laughs> yeah, and there's no waste. And it also, the hawk is, is generally taking, you know, maybe someone, uh, an individual who is sick or, um, you know, it, it, there's a balance that is preserved. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the important thing to recognize that it's not all just sweetness, that it is harsh. Being a wild animal is very tough on its own, much less living mm -hmm. with humans. And so the first part is just respecting. And I think for me, the second part to what you're mentioning is how do you put yourself in that space? I think the thing that helps me is just to listen and to be still mm. and let the animals teach me. And they train me. They let me know what's okay. And I really take my cues from them. It's a matter of being still and just watching and listening and paying attention as opposed to saying, well, this is what I think. Let me give you my opinion, <laughs> which is what we're always doing. It's saying, well, what can I learn here? Mm. And that's what I sit outside and think about, well, what can I learn? Out in Luann's yard, I couldn't help but look around for the residents I'm most excited to meet, the birds. So there's uh, a California scrub jay in, in, in the back. I hear um, house finch are singing. Uh, there's a Buick Wren up in the corner as well. Lesser goldfinch, you can hear, they have like a, a nice little whistle. Here's a, a turkey vulture. I wonder if that's one of one of your friends. Yeah. So there's there's definitely a lot of activity. I don't know if you heard anything that I didn't list. I'm sure there's a lot more going on. I am hearing all the sounds of construction and helicopters and planes because I know you're recording. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh no. That's what you're focusing yeah. on. Well, that's Los Angeles. That's that's the beauty of everyday life. People are going places. People are traveling. People are working. And that's where I like to hear, oh, heard a raven. Even as that happens, you can always pause and enjoy nature or appreciate nature. Human Nature is hosted by Marcos Trinidad and produced by Caroline Champlin and me, Carla Javier. Kelly Prime is our story editor. Fiona Ng is our acting supervising producer. Mixing and engineering by Parker McDaniels. Our time in the field was recorded on Gabrileño Tongva territory. Ex Manana composed our music. Doris Anahi Munoz is the music supervisor. Human Nature is a production of LAS Studios. The marketing team created our branding with art by Christine Tyler Hill. Special thanks to Taylor Kaufman, Sabir Brara, Kristen Hayford, Kristen Muller, Andy Orozco, Michael Cosentino, and Neha Sheda. Antonia Cerejito and Leo G are the executive producers for LAS Studios. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, 
who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. This program is made possible in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. That's all for this episode of Human Nature. See you next week.